Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I've been blogging since before blogging was a word, and those of you who know me know that as well. Been publishing my personal thoughts to the net for the greater part of a decade. Uh, well, long before that, but I mean professionally on LockerGnome.com, which has now evolved into a blog network and will soon evolve into an open source community platform. Um, I'm going to be initiating a project or what this particular community calls an install profile of Drupal and basically going to build what I believe is just going to be an amazing platform for community connections both inside the community as well as their external social data like uh, their Flickr accounts, Delicious accounts, uh, you know, uh, the Twitters, you know, YouTube, wherever else they may have data out on the web. Last.fm, another one. Uh, so anyway, uh, stay tuned. There's some interesting stuff happening inside the uh, my own little corner of the blogosphere and will certainly help everybody. I know some of you have submitted top five tips uh, and have posted them already to your Locker Gnome blog, which is really kind of cool. A good HDTV tips list uh, was submitted uh, just the other day, and uh, it was posted, of course, on Locker Gnome. That was from one of you guys out there. Uh, Matt, I believe, posted that. One of you Matt's. Matt's Tech from the chat room at live.perillo.com. No matter, I get questions all the time about blogging and blogging tips and things to do, things not to do. And you know, the web is full of blogs, which is cool because everybody's got you know their own thoughts that they want to share with the world. And that's pretty much what a blog is. It's a publishing platform. It's a chance for you to share what you think with the world. Uh, that's both a good and a bad thing because some people can't form a very complete thought and I'm guilty of that at times uh, more than anything uh, you know your blog when you publish something and put it out on the web it's out there like forever like even if you delete that post uh, the Wayback Machine may hold on to it uh, it could be in Google's cache for a while uh, you know there's no way you could ever delete all the data that you've published to the net that's one very important thing to think about when I read this list to you, submitted by a youngin, 14 years old, uh, Thomas, and he says, I tried blogging about tech to make some money. He said he kept it up for two months, and during that two months, he got 10 subscribers and 200 visitors and 30 cents. He'd also changed the title. At the end of the two months, he notes that he stopped because it was stressing him out and causing him to lose sleep. He learned quite a bit during those two months, and at 14 years old, um, you know, he... I'm glad you tried, and I'm glad you shared these tips, and we're going to see if, if they're applicable to everybody, not just people who are, uh, you know, maybe in Thomas's age range or in my age range, or in an age range well beyond. <clears throat> he says uh, that he noticed that we've got quite a following of all sorts of ages here, and he thought he would share, from his perspective, the top five do's and don'ts for beginning bloggers who might specifically want to make money. Number five, don't think you're going to get rich quick. Blogging takes a ton of effort, work, and time. You're not just going to start a blog, write a few posts, throw in AdSense, and make a million dollars, so keep that in mind. I do it because I enjoy it as well, not just for money, but of course I'm only 14 and I don't need to feed a family. It's one of the reasons why I opened up uh, blogs on Locker Gnome, because I can help people make money through blogging that way. And more than anything, we have a couple of people who've gotten bigger writing gigs because they wrote so well and they did really good art... Uh, <laughs> They wrote really well and did um, articles that were unique and just well constructed and they got picked up and have either now moved on and, and started to do other writing gigs thanks to you know what they did on Locker Gnome. Uh, and then even beyond that, they've gotten quoted in press articles because of the stuff they've written on Locker Gnome. Number four, choose a niche. And no, tech is not a niche unless you're somebody like who lives, eats, sleeps, and breathes tech, as he notes is me. Tech is just too wide a topic. Trust me, I tried it. Well, that's the thing. Blogging is something on the internet, and there are a lot of geeks on the internet. So when a tool is available, who do you think is the first to jump on it? Geeks. Well, what do geeks write about? They write about what they know. And what do they know? Technology. So if you're going to write about tech, you have to have a very strong voice. You have to be dead on. You have to, you know, just gain such a strong following 
that it's going to make it worth your time. Maybe not monetarily, but certainly in terms of the amount of people that you're going to reach. So he said, so what should you blog about, you ask? Well, make a list of your top five things to do. Those are all potential blog topics. Blog about what you like, otherwise it'll get boring and become a chore. Why do you think I've been encouraging you guys to submit top five lists? Many of you have either blogged, you've thought about blogging, you just don't know what to blog about. You make a top five tips list, it is amazing fodder for a blog post. It's amazing to share your knowledge with the rest of the world. And if you boil it down to five or so topics, it's enough, especially if they're very, 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 very unique points that you're bringing up. I mean, just saying top five ways of, of picking up a remote control. I mean, well, you can pick it up this way, you can pick it up this way, you can pick it up this way. I mean, you can only pick up a remote control so many times. Number three, do read other blogs in the niche that you choose. It's very important. It keeps you up to date on the latest news in your niche and will give you an idea for post. If a feed reader is a good way to go, then try it. I would also recommend reading problogger.net for more tips on making money blogging. Well, the thing is, is, is that when you have a lot of people talking, who's listening? It's important to participate inside a community, but it's also important to participate in a targeted fashion. Um, you know, I'm just a, an information junkie. I'm constantly consuming, constantly trying, uh, constantly learning. And so my path is mm, anything that can help me in my professional career, in my personal life. And so it's less about, I mean, yeah, I'm interested in technology, but I'm more interested in how technology impacts our lives. Uh, and, and how it, it technology impacts your career, if, even if it's not in technology. But he makes a, a good point. Um, you know, knowing what the rest of your particular community is talking about is important. But sometimes walking into somebody else's community and being silent for a while and just observing is equally as important. Number two, do comment on other blogs in your niche. This will help you get your name out and drive traffic to your blog. Newsflash, cool post man is not a comment. Comments are well-written tips relating to the post or an answer to the question in the post or other comments. It's conversation. This is why I think a lot of uh, blogs and um, blo blog commenters, this is why and where they fall short. Uh, they may have an amazing tip, but if that's not related to them directly as their name or their identity on that site or throughout the internet, then sometimes it gets lost in the fray. And that's a big issue that I think, uh, you know, certainly bloggers are going to have to wrestle with, comments in bloggers are going to have to wrestle with, it ties back to you and the value that you're providing and the experience that you're sharing in any particular blog post, whether you're writing it or whether you're commenting it. Um, you know, I, I get, I'm now collecting quite a few very useful comments um, in my blog posts and it's not because I, I beg for them, but I ask. And sometimes that's all you got to do is ask, well, what do you think? Or pose the question. Uh, you would absolutely be surprised at how much more you'll get from your audience if you ask direct questions instead of leaving it up to them to decide whether or not they're going to leave a comment or not. Number one, don't rush into it. Plan ahead. It's probably the single most important thing when you start a new blog. Choose a name for your blog, get a domain, get a design, and get hosting. I would also recommend writing a couple of posts to get you started. Do all this before you launch. Also, budget in a little money. You'll need it for hosting, and you may want to buy advertising. Remember, blogging is a big commitment. It takes a lot of time to run a good blog. And he notes here where he fell short. I didn't plan ahead. I didn't get hosting. I used uh, a free host. I didn't get a design. I was still designing the blog a month into it, and I didn't comment on other blogs. There are so many other things out there you can say about blogging. These are just some things that stood out for me. To learn much more, you know, go to Google, search blogging tips, or you know, ask other people who are hanging out in the chat room. They are probably bloggers as well. Um, he happens to be at flight.tumblr.com, and Thomas. And, uh, you know, it's, I've always said this, it's more important as a blogger, if you label yourself that, it's more important for you to be outside your own blog than concentrating on your own blog. It's much more important to look at how you're, interacting in the community rather than what you're doing here because the only way of getting people to pay attention to what you're doing here is by doing things out here 
and I can I, I can illustrate it quite clearly. How did the people who have voice in the chat room right now? How did you guys find me? How did you guys locate the live stream that we do here every day? Live.perillo.com. How did you find it? I'm guessing that most people who respond either they've known me for a while or they went to YouTube. Omni Dragon, YouTube. M Rivera One, YouTube. Persian Paladin, YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. CNN, YouTube. Google. Do you understand? That's the power of YouTube, okay? So if I was just existing on my blog and saying, everybody who knows me can come and see me at live.perillo.com and just relying on my blog, I wouldn't have, like, I would say 50 or more percent of my audience. I had to go to YouTube and, and say, well, I'm going to publish here. I'm going to share my thoughts here and say, look, if you guys want to catch me live, I'm over here. And that's how it flowed. So I had to interact outside my community, outside my blog, to get people to pay attention to what I was doing. That's why YouTube is so important. It's why I do what I can on YouTube. Uh, some people say, well, Chris, you need to do more. People say, Chris, you need to pay attention to the chat room more. The problem is, is there's so much going on these days. There's so many publish, uh, people publishing just amazing tips and tricks and so many things that you can do with your time that it makes it less likely that anybody is going to get a sliver of attention. So what you do, I'll go back to what I was saying in the beginning, whatever you do, be unique, be original, be original, unique, okay, so that's kind of uh, one and the same. Uh, be redundant, apparently that helps as well. I don't know why I said those two things. Be interesting. Uh, unless you were just making a comment on that, like, interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Everyone's going to have a different set of tips, but I think these are re really good. I mean, for eh, not to say that, you know, being 14 years old is bad, but I certainly didn't know this much when I was 14. We couldn't blog. Uh, we had, uh, in when I was 14, we used uh, stone tablets and chiseled in clay. You know, and uh, we didn't have grocery stores either. Didn't have food. That's how old I am. Okay, hopefully we got our points across. My email address is chris at perillo.com. I can be found everywhere on the internet. It, it, seriously, I mean, you can't go to uh, a, a network and not find me. Uh, you know, you can't go to Twitter and not find me. You can't go to Google and not find me. You can't go to YouTube and not find me. I am more difficult not to find than I am to find. Does that make me a good blogger? No, it just makes me someone who doesn't have much of a life. And I uh, pretty much prove that every single day because we're streaming this live video out over the internet as I, I claim, whether I'm sitting at this desk or not. Uh, there are people you know, in the chat room who are mm, typically talking tech. It's usually, and this is the funny thing, I feel like I'm in Groundhog Day. Like if you ever want to talk about gaming, or hardcore platforming, like overclocking processors, video cards and stuff, I'm telling you, stop by the chat room. Because I kid you not, every single time I look to the chat room, they're talking about one of those things. Doesn't matter what time of day. Every single day. Doesn't matter. The topic is pointless. They're going to talk about games and, and hardware, and it's that's fine. We're geeks and everything. But if you want to learn more about that, there's no better place to come and learn it than at one place, and one place alone, and that is live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.